As you're studying economics, you're probably trying to figure out which fields of economics are going to produce the greatest value for you. Well, I have three principles that I think can guide you towards making a decision on where you should study. And I'm gonna demonstrate that on how I came to study my fields of economics. To start, let me take you to a Haitian village where I am weeks away from starting my PhD in economics, but I'm in Haiti interviewing people who are receiving microfinance loans. That's right, I am in Haiti because I am interested in development economics. And that is the first principle that you should keep in mind is that you should actually be interested in this thing. And I'm having a pretty good time. A microfinance organization had asked me to work with their clients to interview them and figure out all these things that would be useful for helping the microfinance organization improve their services. This was a lot of fun for me because I speak Haitian Creole, en fait, moi parle tant and I was able to actually interview these people face to face. I got to explore their lives. But one interview stood out to me and stands out to me today because it really changed what I ended up pursuing in economics. I'm talking to a man about his monthly expenditures and I ask him, how much does he spend on transportation every month? And he responds, I don't really spend anything on transportation. Now, I doubted that that was the case, so I started to probe him a little more. I was like, really, you don't take any of the local buses, you don't pay drivers? He said, no, I don't do any of that. I have my own motorcycle. Okay, great. How much do you spend on this motorcycle? Well, it's not actually my motorcycle. It's my son's motorcycle. Fine. How much do you spend on gas every month? Oh, well, this is how much we spend on gas. We had to really dive deeper and deeper to actually get the answer to this question. And I knew that this was actually a general problem or at least challenge with a lot of surveys. And I'd seen this in books I had read about development economics, but this is the first time I'm experiencing it for myself. And it really starts to challenge my belief and what I'm gonna be able to do in development economics. I'm just not super confident that I'm going to be able to make a contribution in development economics because I'm not sure if I trust the research that I was doing. And this is the second principle of deciding which fields of economics you should study. You should look at where you can make the greatest contribution. This is different depending on whether you're pursuing research or you're pursuing a career after your undergraduate. If you are interested in doing a PhD and you want to do research, a contribution is near the top and you have to be making a unique contribution, something where you are discovering something or highlighting something that no one else has done before. The bar is not that high if you are an undergrad and you are just trying to get a career. When you think about that, you should look at the contribution of what your skills can bring to this field or the careers that are related to this field. So an example might be you could be interested in econometrics or applied economics, these data analytic intensive fields, and you might be able to make a contribution by being the kind of person that can run regressions, who can code. Those are the skills that you bring and you can actually contribute if you were to get a job there. If you didn't actually have the skills, pursuing those fields wouldn't be beneficial. Of course, you pursue those fields so that way you can pick up the skills. But my point is, I think there are a lot of people who come to me and say, hey, I'm interested in these things, but I'm not really the coding type or I'm not very strong at math. Well, then that might not be the field that you wanna go into to make your contribution. Maybe you focus on a field of economics that has career opportunities, but doesn't require the data analytics or the math. So I'm in Haiti and starting to doubt whether I actually want to pursue development economics in a few weeks when I start my graduate program. And I start to reflect on the other things that I might do. Now, I wrote my grad school application and said that I wanted to do behavioral economics and Yale had some great behavioral economists. In fact, while I was there, Bob Schiller won the Nobel Prize for his work in behavioral economics. So there are clearly people there who could help me. But I think I just wasn't sure I was going to make a contribution there either. Another field that I'd been really interested in was labor economics. And I actually started pursuing this one. I started doing some work in labor economics and I enjoyed it 
But again, I wasn't sure if I could make the biggest contribution in labor economics. Fortunately, while I'm in Haiti, I'm doing something else that opens up the field that I wanna study. Earlier that year, a book on Haitian history had been published. It was called Haiti, Aftershocks of History. And I was like, well, if I'm gonna be in Haiti, I should dive into the history of Haiti. I should understand it a little bit more. So I brought this as my recreational read during the study. And in it, I'm starting to see some economic details, some of the institutions at the heart of Haiti. I start questioning, what were the effects of these institutions on Haitian economic development? In particular, I was looking at a land tenure arrangement that linked land to whole families. There's a whole thing. You could write an entire dissertation on this. I start asking the questions about Haiti's economic history and I start getting interested in it. And I feel like, there hasn't been work done there, so maybe I can make that contribution. In fact, I, as I said, I speak Haitian Creole. Maybe I'm going to be unique in the ability to contribute here where nobody else has before. But there's a problem where I'm not sure if there are historical records intact that would open up paths of research. And I'm also worried about the third principle. Now, the third principle was resolved months later by my economic history professor. I talked about my economic history professor in my video on economic history and how his class was just something that was so interesting for somebody mired in the math and theory of a first semester economics program. I had mentioned to them that I might be interested in looking at the economic history of Haiti and he was supportive. He thought that was interesting. The class ended. I wasn't sure if I was going to pursue it. But then weeks, months after that semester ended, I ran into him around the department and he stopped me. He said, hey, I have been talking to people about Haiti and you need to do that. You could be the guy. Now, this is him saying you could be making a contribution. But what really stood out to me was that he was talking to other economists and they were saying, yeah, we would love to have somebody working on that. He was talking about the third principle here, where there is general interest in it. You need to find something that other people are interested in, something not only that you are interested in, not something that you can just make a contribution in, you need a contribution that other people want to see. So these three principles you can think of as a Venn diagram. And what you want to do is find yourself in the middle where you are interested, you can make a contribution, and other people are interested in your contribution. Now, you might be somebody who's interested in something and you can make a contribution, but you can't find other people who are interested in it. That's more of like a hobby than it is a career. Now, you could have something where you're making a contribution and other people are interested in it, but you're not interested in it. And that's not gonna be very satisfying. You wanna end up right there in the middle where you're able to hit all three principles. And so as you're evaluating the courses and the fields available to you, you should look at whether you're interested in it, whether you have the skills or are interested in gaining the skills where you can contribute in that field. And you should look at whether there is general interest, either in careers or in the research that you might be producing. Now, if you're interested in learning about fields of economics, you should check out this playlist right here where I dive into them.